Hello, everybody, and welcome to another edition of the best of Pedal Shift. On this edition, we go all the way back to May 30th, 2019, and our continuation of the revisit of the 2019 tour from D.C. to Cincinnati. In this month's installment, we ride up and out of Cumberland, Maryland on the Great Allegheny Passage. Join us next month for part three and the month after that for the final installment of this revisiting of the 2019 tour. Hope you enjoy. My timing was exquisite to capture the train sound here. In Myersdale, Pennsylvania, mile marker 32, roughly, of the Great Allegheny Passage. I uh, slept really hard last night until about 6.30, so I, that's oversleeping compared to what I've been doing lately. Noticing something as I was leaving town and starting the ascent, that there was a pinging, and it sounded like something having to do with my spokes, and I was really worried about that. It was on the front wheel, um, which is, if you're going to have something happen, you want it on your front wheel. But as I did a closer inspection, of an issue that I've been having since the Paw Paw Tunnel, believe it or not, I look at the water bottle cage on the left-hand side of the wheel, and there's a stick that's just long enough that's stuck in the cage that's just pinging, pinging, ping, ping on those spokes. So not only was it creating the annoying sound, it probably was also creating an imperceptible amount of drag. So there was that. Removed that, all was good. I felt like from a good chunk of the climb up until Frostburg, I had too little air in my tires. They were a little sub-supple for all you fans of the supple life. So I filled those up there. But on the way up there, I noticed there was a tree down that actually caused me to have to go into the tracks. There's a train that, it's kind of like a tourist train that goes up the hill there uh, for basically until Frostburg, about 11 miles or so. And I uh, ended up... uh, remarking in my own head, I said, hey, hey, self, that um, the entire CNO, there wasn't any tree down the entire time. And yet here I am on the gap and it's within the first like 10 miles or so there was a tree down, which was kind of funny, but remarkable. And by CNO terms, a damn miracle. It was really muggy this morning. It wasn't warm or even hot by any stretch, Um, but I had to go down to shorts uh, early on, and I'm glad I did because it really made the ride a lot more pleasant for me as I was going. I did feel slow, and I think part of that was because the trail was really soft in parts. I described the gap after a rain as being like riding in a wet ashtray, and it certainly fit that for a while, but in other parts, it was great, um, particularly after the Eastern Continental Divide, which I'll talk about in a bit. Um, But the slowness really got to me after a while. It felt like that this was the slowest I've ever climbed from Cumberland up. And that just sort of gets you after a little while. But uh, eventually I got up there. But first, you know, you have a few mile markers to go for. And the first, of course, is the Mason-Dixon line, which is the border between Pennsylvania and Maryland. I got a few pictures there. That's always kind of fun and nice because you know that it's like boom, boom, boom all in a row and, and you're getting someplace. Next up was Big Savage Tunnel. There there are three tunnels, I think, on the way up, and they're all really cool, but Big Savage is the big one. It's the one they have to close during the winter months, but it was kind of spooky. I think I've run into this before. There was fog inside of the tunnel, and I think I've seen that movie before. It, it was called The Fog, and people die. It's, it's not good. But I saw it in Paris at last with my cousin and Kimberly, and we had fun with it. It was hysterical. It's not supposed to be hysterical, but it is. Anyways, fog and big savage tunnel. I finally got to the Eastern Continental Divide, and it just felt like victory. (laughs) Because that's 20-some-odd miles of... It's not a terrible hill, but it's 20 miles of it. And, you know, while I'm in the middle of it, I keep going, "Uh, why do I say I prefer going this way? Why do I say? And the answer is, on the other side of the Eastern Continental Divide, man, you just fly. It's like having a rocket tied to your bike. It's not much of a grade, but after battling it all the way up, man, I just flew to Myersdale, which was 11 miles later. It feels like 
for the entire trip, I've been going sub 10 miles per hour. So to be able to go 15 ish, which is basically my rough guess of how fast I was going, it just felt so good and it felt effortless and it felt like, like, well, normal when I do bike touring. And I think that the CNO, especially day two was super slow. And then of course today up until that point, it felt super slow. It gets a little frustrating after a little while. So I get to Myersdale and literally as I'm coming into town, I start feeling some raindrops. The forecast has changed and it feels like that there's no such thing as good forecasts at all on this trip. I mean, this time yesterday, it looked like the the next several days were going to be beautiful and nice and sunny. And it looks like, you know, there's solid chance of rain today starting now. And it started when I rolled in. So of course, you know, that's going to impact how far I can go. You know, I'm only about 12 miles away from what my scheduled camp would be. Now, if I want to push and see if I can make up that day, uh, so I can get a zero day potentially, uh, to have that in my back pocket. Well, I want to go 30 more from here. So we're just going to have to see. Um, I really needed a break. I had my lunch in Frostburg. You know, I've, I've got like a banana and I've got some other things, but I went down the hill here. I've never actually done anything in Myersdale, <laughs> strangely enough, but I went to the ice cream place here and got a hot fudge sundae. And I think that that's going to be good. I'll go the 12 miles to Rockwood and there's a, a kind of interesting gas station thing there. They've got food. And I think that what I'll do is I'll stop. I'll collaborate and listen. No, I won't. I won't do that. I will (laughs) hang out, grab a, they usually have pizza and it usually, (laughs) usually it tastes pretty good. So I may get a slice of pizza and I may just sort of like take another break because at that point it'll be 18 more miles and I can see what's the rain situation. Like there's a great campground there. And you have access to a shower house and stuff like that. I also have the same thing in Confluence as well. That's the uh, Army Corps of Engineers site. So we will see. You will you will know the answer just by listening to me. I've got to do some biking. With all the rain that is likely to happen tonight, and maybe it's not that hard. Maybe it's just like a little bouts of gentle drizzle all night. You know, I just think that it'll be better to get them bang out the miles because when I wake up and when I go on the trail tomorrow, it's going to be a soft trail and I'd rather have less of that. There's also the possibility that if things are just bleh, even if I bang out those miles, well, then it's a super short day to Connellsville or I can push to Dravo Cemetery, which it would be, if I can get there, that makes up one full day. So we'll have to see but actually today, you know, now that I'm done with the the, um, the hill part, I actually feel a lot better. Also, I just had a massive hot fudge Sunday and, you know, I'm on a sugar high, which is something I normally don't have. All right. That's the first half of day four, May 4th. May the 4th be with you. It is the end of the day and I am in, drum roll please, Confluence, Pennsylvania. Yes, I did the lengthier version. I made some more miles. Now, let's not get super excited here. I only did 18 extra miles, but uh, I believe, if I am not mistaken, this is the first time that I have ever gone from Cumberland to Confluence in one shot. I may be wrong. I should go back and check that, but it's good because the original plan had me only going so far as uh, to Rockwood, but um, I was feeling good, so I kept going. This also gives me an opportunity to make up a day, which would allow me for uh, allow me a zero mile day, which I think might not be a terrible idea. You may or may not be able to hear right now. It is raining here in Confluence. So let's go back to where we left off. The ride to Rockwood was delightful AF. You know what that means. <laughs> it was, even though it was raining, a little light rain, is nice to ride in if it's not too much of a slog. And I think that because the grade is a little bit downhill coming in that direction, it uh, makes it fine. It worked out really, really well. The rain was just enough to feel occasionally, but not so much to soak. And the other thing that really felt good was I had the perfect combination of clothing on. So I was not, not too hot, not too cold, and I was relatively dry. And that's about the best thing you can do when you're riding in the rain. So that was really good. I find that every time I am in Rockwood, Pennsylvania, which is where I stop for a break, it's always raining. 
I don't think I've ever been there. I think it's for the fourth time. It is always raining when I'm there. I just dumbass luck. I ended up buying a sandwich and they were playing Don't Dream It's Over by Crowded House, which was frankly just unexpected. Then I went outside. I was sitting there. I was eating my sandwich. I was eating my uh, or drinking my uh, sugary soda, which I normally never do. And I decided I was definitely going to Confluence because I felt as the sugar rushed in my veins that I had definitely 18 more miles left in me. By the way, as uh, leaving town, I noticed that the mile marker 44 post, there's an Easter egg on the back of it. I don't know if if it's always going to be there, but mile 44 posts, you should check those out if you're a pedal shift fan. When you're in Rockwood, coming in the direction that I'm coming in, it's sort of the first place where you really start to feel the Pittsburgh influence. And it's just kind of a vibe. It's it's the, the folks you meet. But, of course, it's also the sports gear that is kind of up. And there was a tattered Pens towel. The Pittsburgh Penguins was the National Hockey League team for Pittsburgh. And it was sort of nailed up outside and just sitting there recalling better championship days of, of the past. But it was kind of funny to see. Also, I'd like to say that Whoopie Pies are Pennsylvania's best contribution to society if it weren't all full of sugar and poison, but when I'm riding my bike, it is fantastic, and I am a big fan. Getting back to Rockwood a little bit, though, I can't help but feel like that every time I'm there, I get eyes on me, and part of it is, you know, I'm always going to the same spot. It's not a very big town, and there's a convenience store that's literally right next to the local bar, and every single time, it's as if people are like, who is this alien? Despite the fact that there is a bike trail there, that you just know people are going by there every day. I just find that interesting. I think, I don't know if there's an inherent suspicion amongst the folks there, but unlike other places, don't get a lot of hellos. Very, in, very interesting. It, I'm sure it's just me, but I don't know. Something, something I notice every time I go. Speaking of the bar next door, they were playing a super, super, super deep cut from Poison. Sidebar, I believe the lead singer of Poison is from the Pittsburgh area. Maybe he's from Rockwood. I don't know. But um, that's when I realized it was time to go. Plus, I had finished my whoopie pie. Uh, so I had 18 miles to go. And I was starting to listen. I've been listening to a lot of these true crime podcasts. And I don't know, just nothing was really working for me. So I turned back to music. And man, let me tell you something. I I went with my rando 90s playlist. I think I call it, I call it vintage 90s or something like that. Chock full of like all sorts of stuff. It's not necessarily the poppy stuff. It's more of the indie rock stuff. And it interestingly doesn't have any hip hop in it. So it's not really like broad 90s, but it is, it's good. It, it, it's, it's, a, it's a good guitar indie rock kind of thing. And man, those 18 miles just went away. I almost, almost considered continuing going. I felt so good and I was enjoying the ride so much. But common sense prevailed and I stopped here in Confluence. Basically the next stop, you've got Ohio Pile and there's a campground there, but you have to, it's an annoying climb up there. And then the next stop would have been uh, let's see, Connellsville, which would have been an additional 22 miles, 26 miles, something crazy. I'm glad that common sense prevailed and I can ride those miles and listen to music tomorrow. I'm here at the Army Corps campground. It was only five bucks, but it's so weird. It, you have to call the 800 number to reserve. The, the, the campground hosts don't take money or anything like that. You've got to give them your reservation number. So I called and uh, I was told, hey, it's a 10 minute wait, but if you want us to call back, press one. So I went through the phone tree, had that, said my name, everything, get called back like almost immediately. And I'm like, oh, wow, cool. It was less than 10 minutes. And then I proceeded to sit on hold for 10 minutes. I have no, I have no comment. <laughs> so five bucks. That was nice. It's nice to have a hiker biker campsite that is under eight, but, 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 but the showers, they ain't open. <laughs> so that was kind of the point of staying here. I could have wild camped and not paid five bucks, but I ended up doing like a little sink shower action. And frankly, I'm going to be honest, I may not be clean, but I feel kind of clean. And that is a pretty good feeling. Sum it all up. Like Cube said, today was a good day. 
a wonderful good afternoon. May 5th, 2019 in Connellsville, Pennsylvania. And it was a heck of a morning to get here. It was wet, 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 wet. But let me tell you a little bit about how I got here. It rained all night and it's likely going to continue to rain all day. In confluence, it may rain into the evening. And that sort of was one of the things that helped me make the decision to push on and not take the zero. Trust me, I was very tempted to take the zero that I'd half earned yesterday. But between the fact that the further north I would go, the earlier the rain would end, and the fact that the interior of my tent was starting to get a little bit moist. And, and it wasn't because I had a leak, it's because this, and this happens if I don't have the tarp be perfectly, perfectly taut. I uh, ended up having some condensation because it was so, the rain was so cold and I was warm. So staying in the tent was just not, not gonna be a great thing for a full day. And as much as I probably would have enjoyed a day off, I also was feeling a little restless. So I decided, given all the factors that I would go on, to zero or not to zero? That is the, always the question, right? I decided that really in the end that I was gonna trust my rain wear and my dry bags and push on to at least a Connellsville and assess. It was as expected. It was muddy and it was slow but steady rain until it wasn't. And then it started to pick up again. And that was just a little bit outside of uh, Connellsville where things got really gnarly. But let me back up a little bit and talk a little bit about just before I got into Ohio pile. There was um, a person on a bike with a dog and the person on the bike had a trailer. The dog was on a long lead and they were taking up literally the entire trail. No big deal, it's cool, I share trails. I rang my bell, which <laughs> was more like a thunk, thunk, thunk in the rain, and the person got over, and it was great, except that the dog decided to chase me at passing speed. Now, I can do passing speed for a little while, but not for so long as the dog could. And so I just got to the point where the, the other person was literally right on my tail and I was just like, I just can't keep this up. So I thought, okay, I'm going to back up and I will just not, I will just slow my pace because we were less than two miles to Ohio pile, but I was frustrated by that. And I, I don't know if that came across, but I, I was frustrated. So that person kept going and looked back periodically. And I just sort of said, you know, go ahead. It's, it's cool. And I, I stayed way back, but I think that that bothered the, the other person or there was th th that person didn't feel comfortable with that. And that was just my supposition. I just don't know because they pulled over a little bit later and I just passed and kept going, never saw the person again. So it wasn't a great moment, but at the same time, I was just sort of like, it wasn't like it was a safety issue. It was just like, I just couldn't keep up that pace and didn't feel like exercising the dog for that person. <laughs> Interestingly enough, within like a half mile of that, there was a down tree that was just gnarly and it was high and low and there was no really good way of getting over or around it. So I had to do it in kind of two parts. I had to throw the panniers, the rear panniers over and then I was able to slide the bike under in another part. So it was, um, it took a few minutes and it was dirty, dirty work. And of course, at this point it was, you know, it was coming down just wasn't all that great. And so I'm rolling into Ohio pile and I was wet-ish, but I was warm enough and I was ready to grab some food. Unfortunately, the coffee place that just opened that's supposed to be really good uh, and new was not yet open. It was 9 a.m. on a Sunday. So, I mean, Sundays around here are interesting. Even though it's a weekend, I'm sure the rain had something to do with it. The, and the fact that it's not quite on season yet, I, I was just surprised that things were still closed. So, so be it. No, no big deal. Found a cafe, got an enormous Italian, I think they're hoagies in this part of the state. <laughs> Is it a hoagie or a grinder? I, in any event, that worked out and that kept me fueled up and good, which made me very happy because for the rest of the time, it's a, it was another 18 miles from Ohio Powell to here in Connellsville. And that's when the rain really started to turn up. And I was fine. The, the rain gear was holding up pretty well. And then they got to the point when the rain started to come down at a higher clip. My pants got to the point where they sort of, I, I'll call it failed. They started to 
instead of shedding water, they started to carry some water. And it was fine. They're, they're built to do that. I, I was still warm. I wasn't, you know, it's in the 50s, but I, I was still okay. And as long as I was moving, everything was cool. But I realized that, you know, I was going to have to do something in Connellsville that w would require me to, you know, either stay the night or to handle being wet, <laughs> wet AF. So um, first thing I did was I roll into town, I look on the sign, and I see that there's a laundromat, and I went straight to the laundromat and warmed up just fine there. I was probably there for man, an hour and a half, two hours at most. I had some stinky ass clothes and uh, my rain jacket was d so dirty and they're not as good, Shower's Pass uh, garments aren't as good when they're dirty. So now it's like I'm looking super clean and, and awesome. Uh, one of the things that I was thinking about as I was going through the forest and I left this completely out, so gorgeous, Ohio Pile State Park in the rain, it's just just stunning waterfalls and everything. And unfortunately I didn't have a good opportunity to take pictures, but, um, if you could ever get up here, uh, it is, it's just stunning, but it reminded me a lot of the scene in the Jedi when, uh, and yesterday was May the 4th. So here's my star Wars reference for you a day late. I, I felt very much like with my handlebars, the way they're shaped and my white jacket, I felt very much like one of the stormtroopers in, the, <laughs> in the indoor scene. So excuse the force moon of indoor, excuse me for all of you, for all of you, uh, uh sticklers, star Wars sticklers. So here I am, I'm sitting, I, I just went to Martin's, which is on the, ed, uh, the far edge of town. Um, I, I do think I want to keep going. It's only 20 after three right now. The rain is really subsiding and it's going to, it's stopping. It, it, the spigot is finally turning off. It's gorgeous. It's a little foggy up in the hills where I came from. Uh, trail conditions are eh, not so great, but you know, it is a little bit of a downhill grade. Um, it's much flatter from this point on to Pittsburgh compared to what I've had, but uh, it's still a little bit downhill. I don't expect this to be easy, but you know, I've got, let's see, well, here's the first uh, camping opportunity. There's another one in a few months. You know, there's several camping opportunities between here and Dravo. And if I can get to Dravo tonight, I officially have powered up and earned a zero day because this, where I'm sitting right now, was my scheduled stop. And it's 20 after three. I've got, I've got some, I've got something in me. So I'm gonna eat, I'll probably be here for at least another 10 minutes or so. And then I'm gonna push on. And then I'm just gonna keep an eye on all of the different campsite possibilities. The closer I get to Pittsburgh, the more time tomorrow I'll have for just sort of, making the, the the mini fast forward happen and to find potentially a wild camping spot. Tomorrow is a very likely wild camping kind of day. The weather looks good, uh, but as I've discovered around here, 24 hour forecasts are, are not awesome. <laughs> so we'll see. Um, I'm open to anything. The fact that I spent only five bucks for camping last night tonight I'm unlikely to have to spend anything because all of my options um, are camping between here and Dravo and they're all free including where I'm sitting right now so we'll see how it goes I'm not quite at camp yet well you'll understand in a second here in terms of when there is an all-day rainstorm, the Great Allegheny Passage surface is no better and responds no better than the CNO to an all-day rain. I don't think any trail can handle it unless it's paved. And that was made manifestly clear on the section between, that I just did, basically, between Connellsville and here in West Newton, where I am right now. Oh, by the way, West Newton, mile mark <laughs> 113, I should mention, which I usually do at the top. The rain went down to basically sprinkles, but the damage had already been done. Basically, it's like riding on a beach or in a wet sandbox or any other type of thing. You can hear the trains are around here, huh? Um, you know, and it was funny, like uh, towards the end of the ride into West Newton, I mean, I was just getting, I don't get angry. <laughs> <laughs> but I was getting a little angry. I was just like, let this be over. I'm done with this. Blah, 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 blah. I thought 
briefly about uh, staying. There's a campsite here in West Newton. Uh, I think it's like 10 bucks or something like that. And I briefly thought about staying here, but it turns out it's closed anyways. Um, I guess it got flooded out last year because it rained a lot and it flooded <laughs> all around here. Dude, it's crazy. Okay, you can tell I'm in a little bit better spirits. I went to Fox's Pizza, which is the Pittsburgh area chain very convenient it's right off the trail and they make they make a nice pizza they make a make a nice pie so i got a small one um eat three of the four slices and i've got a fourth to take to camp with me sun is i'll say rapidly setting but i do have enough time it is right now 7 18 and oh that's it's interesting it's exactly one hour until the sun sets so that will be plenty of time to do eight miles even on this wet sandbox <laughs> <laughs> call the Great Allegheny Passage. You know, even if I do arrive a little bit after dark, I think that the twilight has been plenty fine. Um, so we'll see. There's no cell phone signal there, if I recall correctly. Now, I don't know if that's still... Sorry. Trains. Trains are part of <laughs> riding the Great Allegheny Passage. <laughs> awesome for audio-ish. Anyways, as I was saying, I if I recall correctly, I don't get a cell phone signal at Dravo. Tomorrow looks like great weather for the wrap-up of the Great Allegheny Passage. I'll only have about 20, ooh, 25 miles, 27 miles to go. And from there, you know, it's all new to me stuff. We're going to be doing that fast forward. I'm going to be looking for a little bit of stealth camping, wild camping action, and working my way to Ohio. I will not make it into Ohio tomorrow, but I will be getting things set up for it. That's it for the end of day five. I hope you had a wonderful Cinco de Mayo. I just rode a lot in the rain and suffered a bit, <laughs> but I enjoyed it. Type 2 fun. From an undisclosed location, I will say Beaver Falls, Pennsylvania. Uh, it is May 6th, day 6 of the trip, the epic trip, and uh, the Great Allegheny Passage is done. I am outside of Pittsburgh, as I mentioned I did a little bit of a fast forward, and we'll talk a little bit more about all of that in a moment. One thing I'll note is I'm kind of breaking my rules. Um, I'm at my stealth camp, and I'm talking and kind of open and notorious right now because I found a really great spot. I don't think there's any issues with where I'm at. I don't see any possibility of being seen. It does not appear to break any of my rules. Like it, like it. You may hear the traffic because I'm close to the road that I'm at. Anyways. Starting from this morning, the trail from West Newton to Dravo was substantially better. It was hard packed and fast, so this goes back to yesterday. You know, I'll go back to my original note that the gap definitely recovers more quickly than the CNO. So, you know, I think that bad rain's gonna make those trails bad, uh, but I think that it's only gonna take a day of sunshine to basically make the gap better. Sometimes it can take a couple of days for the CNO. So. That's my take on all of that after riding them quite a bit. Apparently, the uh, Adventure Cycling Associations led, or they're leading an Eastern Express group. They either started within the last day or so. Man, from what I hear back down in D.C., and I think that's where they're starting, uh, they're just getting hammered with rain, and I don't know what that trail is like. I feel pretty fortunate that I left when I did, because if I had left a week later, I think that the CNO would have been a much worse slog, and I think I probably would have just chosen to fast forward it or done something different or push push the date back or I don't know I don't know what I would have done so I'm, I'm feeling good about what ended up happening so getting back to the camp yesterday Dravo is an excellent campsite it just is so nice it's uh, stocked with wood it's it's a nice location it's right on the river there it does it is prone to flooding so the ground was pretty moist uh, but it was fine it was it was totally fine I pitched my tent inside one of the Adirondacks because I just, I kind of like the extra privacy. There was one other guy there who, I, I, I don't know what his situation was, um, and he was friendly and he offered, hey, if you want to take some of my fire, go ahead. I mean, so he was a cool dude, but um, I, I just, I don't know what it is. It's just, I, I like when I'm in, when I have my space, I like to kind of cocoon. So that's, that's how I felt about that. My plans at that point, <laughs> I, I guess I should say, I wanted to I wanted to get into Pittsburgh. I wanted to chill there for a bit, do the fast forward, and then get to my wild camp spot. And I think that when all is said and done, it worked out pretty well. The short version of it is, well, I mean, this is a podcast, so I guess I can give you the longer version. <laughs> I 
they're, they're kind of the same. So I ended up having a beer and lunch at the Urban Tap on the south side. And I really liked it. It was uh, the same place that I went to on my last trip here to Pittsburgh in the fall, if you were following at that point. I got some lower alcohol sours with a salad, which is funny because when I'm touring, I'm, I, I crave salads just because I don't get that many vegetables and I eat tons of vegetables normally. So this is what happens when you're on tour, I guess. My bike was locked just a few feet away. It was one of those cool bars where the windows completely open up to the sidewalk and there was no bike parking, strangely enough, there. It's, it's such a good bikey place. There's just terrible bike parking. It's Part of it is just they're very narrow sidewalks and there's just not a place for it. I uh, leaned the bike up, locked it to itself, and uh, was within two feet of it. So I knew that if anybody was going to muss with my stuff, I was going to be right there. So it was really the perfect spot for it. And it was funny. There was a, a group of, I think that they were all sorority sisters. I never tried to listen in, but they're, they're nearly graduated Pitt students, and they were celebrating a birthday over drinks nearby. So it was just kind of like a fun thing. By the way, it made me feel like a thousand years old. So there's that. So the bus was leaving at 1.37 from Heinz Field, and it takes a little bit of doing to get through the downtown area. I got through Point State Park. I took whichever bridge it was to get over to the other side of the river to Heinz Field. And I got there, and I realized, oh, shit, I don't have correct change. So as a result, I missed that bus. But luckily, it was, it was the Allegheny Station, which has, I guess there's a light rail or something that's there as well. But they had a machine where I could use a credit card to buy one of the fares. And it's interesting. It's like folks in Western Pennsylvania, you know this already, but everybody else. It's a cardboard card, but it's a tappable one. And it's a single use. So it was just kind of interesting. It was really easy to use. And it was $2.50. I, uh, I always love to see what the difference is for ride share. It was literally 10 times less than ride share <laughs> to get where I ended up going, which was, oh, I want to, I always screw this up. It's either Ambrose. It was, it was as far north as uh, I could be taken along the Ohio River. And then it was basically about 18 miles of riding. Not basically, it was 18 miles of riding to get to this general vicinity, which I chose largely because of amenities and the ability to find good potential for stealth camping. And man, I nailed it. I just nailed it here. I'm really close. I can just backtrack and go to uh, some of the amenities that are around. So it does feel good. Obviously, you can hear the birds. It's a very happy place. And yeah, I think that even if somebody were to kind of pull in this area, I think I'm tucked away enough and, uh, that I would not be seen. I'd, I ran back here. There was one car that went by, I think, as I was pushing back in here. Uh, but I don't think that they... Uh, pay too much of attention um, to me. So that's good too. Um, followed all the rules. It feels like I'm a little more caught up. I also know that I've got that zero day in my back pocket and I'm keeping an eye on the weather. It looks like tomorrow will be nice. Then Wednesday, Thursday, who knows? The, the biggest thing I need probably is a shower or some way to get, get clean. I think that would be good, um, but I do have the zero day that I think I'm going to do a hotel day, and I, if I can, I may wait to do that uh, down closer to Columbus, just because camping opportunities aren't as good, so maybe I get a suburban Columbus hotel or something like that. Um, I don't know. I'll have to figure that all out, but it would be good to look ahead and use that strategically rather than just saying, ah, I declare today a zero day. One other thing I'm noticing is I'm getting a little bit of play in my head tube, which I've had before on this bike. So I think I'm going to also uh, consider looking for a bike shop to help me out with that. That probably won't happen maybe until Cleveland, perhaps Kent. Actually, Kent, I can probably, that could be as soon as tomorrow. So everything's going just great. This, this went to plan and assuming I can pitch my tent and feel comfortable here, I think I'll have a real good night's sleep and it feels good to be a day ahead of schedule. Real good. Good morning. This is May the 7th. I am outside of Beaver Township on Pennsylvania Route 51 North. And I thought that I would do a special morning edition uh, just to uh, maybe fill in some holes. I feel like I didn't do justice to yesterday's uh, second half of the ride situation. And I think it's important. And then to talk a little bit more about the wild camp. This is a state highway that I'm on, so occasionally cars will be going over me. <laughs> 
Well, buy me. We'll go with buy me. So, first, the, the thing that I think I really foolishly left out about the ride in this phase is, obviously, I'm on roads again. And other than a road between my home and the CNO and a couple of very brief detours on the CNO and Gap, I have been on trails for the bulk of the 350-odd mile. Is it 350? Yeah, it's more than that. But anyways, it's a bit of a mixed bag going back to road. I like road. I don't mind highways. The big, big wide shoulder. There's a rumble strip. So, I mean, I, I feel as safe as one can reasonably be on one of these situations, which doesn't mean that there isn't an element of safety. But I'm also going in the opposite direction of the city. So here we are, morning rush hour, and... Uh, yeah, there's very, actually very few cars on my side. The terrain is the biggest difference. The surface is the other difference. Now, the surface is just substantially faster. Don't let the surface of the CNO and the Gap take you away from riding it. Uh, it is, it is ex- they're both excellent when good. They're both poor when poor. <laughs> but... You know, they just don't compare to a nice smooth asphalt, which is what I'm on right now. It, it just is, is substantially easier to get up to definitely 10, if not 15 miles per hour as kind of a cruising speed. But, of course, the difference here in Western Pennsylvania, and if you know Western Pennsylvania, you know it's like one giant hill and it's all uphill, <laughs> basically. And that's what I'm sort of fighting through the end of. The trail that takes you into Pittsburgh ends up being a really nice uh, boon because, you know, you you don't go through a lot of elevation changes and ups and downs. You don't have to spend your energy doing that. But you're constantly pedaling because it's largely flat. And if it's not flat, the direction I went, yeah, it was downhill. I couldn't have coasted into Pittsburgh by any stretch of the imagination particularly given how wet the conditions were on the trail. But here, it's a lot more up and down now. <clears throat> Before I started recording, I already did a large, long uphill yesterday. And where I ended up wild camping was almost completely at the top of one of the first hills. And really the peak of what's left. If you look at the the hill grade chart, which I'll I'll show you uh, all later. It'll be in the show notes for... uh, You'll see that my climbing was largely done yesterday. Now, it slowed me down a little bit, but not too bad. And I'm I'm happy to say that despite not having hit much in the way of hills since last year, everything seemed fine, even fully loaded. So, that was good. The wild camping experience was really good. Uh, I should call it stealth camping. The uh, place that I was at was on property that was not posted. And it was away from what I can only describe as uh, an abandoned home. And I was able to push, push through a little bit of brush and be behind some substantial coverage from all angles on flat ground. And yeah, there was some road traffic but and the, the noise that comes from it, but that dissipated largely through the night. The only thing that was a little troublesome for me was getting up so darn early. I am not an early riser by nature, and even though I tend to get up very early when I'm touring, I was stealth camping. I'm sort of redoubling my effort to get up even earlier. I would have loved to have slept in a little bit more. Especially because it was a very cold start again this morning. And of course, that's all relative speaking. It was in the 40s, but that's just no fun to get out of a bag for that. But in any event, that was a very good experience. I was also able to clean up a little bit at the campsite. Although I'm sure I'm not super clean. 
And that leads me to the conundrum of today. The weather looks good. The weather looks good tomorrow morning. I have an extremely early morning tomorrow because I have a bus at 6.05 a.m. from Kent to Cleveland. There is an afternoon bus, which I, I suppose I should add into the list of things to consider. But like all trails, it seems that the camping scenarios, the legal camping scenarios on the trail, are uh, a little bit too far away to do an afternoon bus up. So I don't know where I'm going to stay tonight or what my, I'm going to do. I had some stealth camping spots sort of scoped out. And then I was going to ride into campus and grab that bus. But there's also the possibility of doing either a shared room Airbnb or a hotel. Um, and then it's just a question of, is that what I want to do? Do I? <laughs> I, I think I do want to shower. One thing that I will say is, since I've got the zero day in my back pocket, I am uh, looking to do that strategically. I think I've mentioned that before. So we'll... we'll see how this day goes. I've had two very long downhills. I'm only five miles, well, I'm less than five miles. I was five miles when I started talking from the Ohio border, which will be nice. I think a lot depends on my energy. Today's a longer day. Today's about a 65 mile day. So I have much to consider. And of course, I'll be yakking about it here. Catch y'all in Ohio. Hello from Kent, Ohio. I am finishing off day seven in a hotel when all was said and done, that was the right choice for me and probably can hear the echo in, in this room. So I will move, move so I'm not talking towards the wall. I entered Ohio with very little fanfare because it was on a secondary road. One of those teeny tiny little welcome to the state signs, but I did get a picture. So that was kind of fun. The shoulders shrank the second I moved from Pennsylvania into Ohio. And there were times when the shoulders were, well, they basically shrank to nothing on some of the real tertiary roads, which was to be expected. I have to be honest, though, I was largely okay with what was going on with the shoulders. When they were there, they were nice um, in parts. And then, you know, as you started going into some of the tertiary roads, you just don't expect them to be there at all. And, you know, road conditions were good when they were good. And when they were bad, man, oh my. (laughs) Yeah, it was was interesting. I got on bike route J, which is an Ohio State designated bike route. And it was really low traffic, but it just had awful, awful stretches of pavement. I mean, we're talking like, not just like kind of like little ruts and, you know, chip seal and and potholes and stuff like this, but like just terrible, terrible pavement. Like, like consider, I would consider it on par with how uh, the worst parts of the gap in CNO are after things rain and then things dry where you've got tire routes and stuff like that. It was, it was, it was really interesting. It was fine though. I mean, I knew that today was kind of a roll your own adventure kind of day because I was doing something that a whole lot of folks have been trying to do. And that is to connect the Great Allegheny Passage with the Ohio to Erie Trail. And this was the most direct way to do it if you want to get to Cleveland. So I guess I could have, I talked about this in the preambles uh, to the shows, that I could have very easily just hooked up around uh, Clinton or so, which is basically due west of here, and and that would have been just fine, and then just ridden south, and yeah, I would have gotten, I think, everything except for 35, 40 miles, eh, maybe a little bit, maybe closer to 50 miles of the trail. But I decided I did want to go up to Cleveland. I did want to do the whole do the whole experience, and that's why I'm staying in Kent tonight. And I'll be uh, taking the bus up there to Cleveland, and then basically coming right straight down to to Clinton. If I wanted to take a zero day, this would have been a good opportunity to do it. Then it could have been a shorter ride, but so be it. it it's all good. Getting back to today, though, the the scenery was it was good. I mean, there were, there were moments when I was sort of like, oh, good. It, enjoy this moment. 
but it was monotony that you get when it's well not always the root of monotony you know it was one type of look it was very much farmland and it was pretty in parts and the barns were, were were really nice but it was what i found interesting is i didn't take many pictures today i don't know maybe i just thought today was going to be the tough day and i didn't want to stop and when i did stop i wanted to focus on me you know focus on hydration and things like that but there weren't a ton of things that just caught my eye i found that i had my head down a lot today which i try not to do And when I say that, I mean that more figuratively than literally. I wasn't taking in the sights as much. And I think part of it is because I'm anticipating that the trail is going to take care of all of that. I'm going to see a lot of Ohio, so I'm not not too worried about missing out on parts of that. I decided to skip the stealth camping, as I mentioned. And I'm sitting in an inexpensive hotel. Um, It's about a 20-minute ride or so from the Kent State campus. Simply put, I needed a shower worse than I needed to save faces, the camping guy. So I hope you forgive me. I'm I'm very much at peace with this. Trust me. Today, the headwinds were gusty as all get out. I mean, it was it was a tough day at times. My energy level was pretty good throughout. But towards the end, I was ready for the day to be over. And I rode pretty strong. I started early, of course. I think I left the uh, Walmart where I kind of supplied up at about 7.30 in the morning, give or take. And I ended up getting to the hotel, I want to say it was a touch before 4 or a touch after 4. So, you know, it, you can do the math. I mean, it, it's, it's not exactly burning things up, but, you know, I did stop relatively frequently because I really wanted to focus on hydration and all of that. Um, but when all of a sudden done, I feel okay now. I, I'm definitely going to sleep well tonight. The combination of an early morning and then a long riding day, I think, is um, definitely going to bring me some Z's. Tomorrow, of course, will be kind of uh, the same way. The terrain was kind of mixed. It was hilly, but not super hilly. I would classify it as kind of classic rollers in parts. But then there were a few FU hills there, the, the kinds that just sort of like pop out of nowhere and they're, 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 they get steeper up towards the top. And yeah, there were a couple times I just hopped off the bike. I was just like, eh, screw it. I don't care. And they were typically in parts where there was no shoulder either. So it was like, you know, uh, I'm just going to, I'm just going to make this happen. And It ended up working out. The one thing that I wanted to kind of mention about where I'm at tonight is because I'm about 20 minutes or so from the campus and the city center, I'm missing out on what I anticipated was an evening where I'd get to see some of Kent State and then and the the town, which looks to be really, really cool. But down here, I thought, oh, well, maybe I'll just go for a walk. Once I took a shower and and got my bearings back again, I was like, oh, I'll walk over and maybe go get a beer at the gas station or something like that, you know, get a six packer, wouldn't drink at all, but maybe get, maybe get a 40, I don't know, something. But you know, when I walked out the front of the hotel, I realized this is not a pedestrian friendly area, like at all. Like, I mean, I could, I couldn't figure out how to even walk to any place that even remotely looked like there was a sidewalk. So I could have gone back and gotten on my bike, but I was so biked out today. Near kind of the junction of an interstate, I just didn't want to put up with it. So I ended up going back to the hotel and I got a pizza delivery. So uh, my my very, very exotic uh, tour, <laughs> pizza delivery in Ohio. But that's cool. Um, I'll have plenty of opportunity to sample Ohio's wares, including beer and many other things, starting tomorrow. And I I have to say, I'm pretty excited about this. Um, Since I did the interview um, with folks from the Ohio to Erie Trail, I've been thinking, hey, that sounds like a good trail to give a shot. So I've got um, basically, if you don't want to count the mileage to get to Kent tomorrow, it's I think like three miles. I have 326 miles uh, left in my day uh, or left in my tour and I know I've done more than 400 so we're past the halfway point and uh, I'm ahead of schedule so there is going to be a point in time when I'll be uh, taking a zero I mean I have to at some point even if I bike all the way through I have to take a zero in Cincinnati so uh, that's just the way the train schedules are anyways 
I am uh, looking forward to the next phase, and I'm really, really glad I took this luxurious hotel day because I think uh, it will be a good battery recharge for me because tomorrow's going to be a long day. It's going to be early in the morning, and then it's going to be about 50-some-odd miles of biking or so, and I have a shot at maybe saying hello to a listener and then the day following to meet up with some folks that uh, are listeners to the show and who I met up with last year on tour. So hopefully the uh, bicycle touring gods will smile favorably on all these things because that would be nice. All right, that is the end of day seven. Tomorrow, Cleveland and the beginning of the Ohio to Erie Trail. Statistics on this leg of the trip. Miles 234, bus miles 16, flats 0, mechanicals 0, camping nights 3, stealth nights 1, rude nights 1, mile marker 44, Easter egged 1, number of times I heard yins in Pittsburgh unironically 1. Thank you for joining. You can find Pedal Shift at pedalshift.net for more great bicycle touring content. You can hear the Pedal Shift project through Apple Podcasts or your favorite podcast app. Opening music courtesy of Jason Kent off his self-titled album. The track is called America. Check out his band Sunfield's latest release, Mono Mono, wherever cool music is available. 